Fun fact I forgot to tell you, make sure that you are actually attaching this straight and that your handle doesn't accidentally end up crooked. It happens more than you think. Okay, so we are gonna make a coil cup. I have rolled out a bunch of coils because they tend to make the camera shake. Um, and the first thing we need to do is make a base. So I have started this coil and I've started curling it around in a spiral. Now the only thing you have to remember to do before you really curl it is add score marks. Remember anytime we connect two pieces of clay together, score marks, a little bit of slip, and then you can spin it together. Add some more score marks. You're gonna keep doing this until the base is as large as you want it to be. Um, I suggest at least like the size of a post-it note across. That generally, unless you're gonna have a very narrow base and get it wider as it goes up, um, it's usually helpful to start with that size. So I'm gonna keep going. A little bit of slip, a little bit of scoring. I'll show you the smoothing step in a little bit. We're gonna go, oops, try to do that out of order. <laughs> Can't slip first, that doesn't work. All right, let's say like this. Well, yeah, let's do that. All right, this is gonna be the end of my coil. Score, 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 score. Really, I should be scoring on both sides, but I'm gonna smooth this well enough that it'll be okay. If you wanna be very good, I suggest scoring on both sides. Okay, now we're gonna do that squish together thing that we talked about. And then you're gonna get, grab a rib tool. So there are wooden rib tools, metal rib tools, and silicone or rubber rib tools. Um, for this one, I'm gonna start with a wooden one. So you're gonna hold it with the curved side out, four fingers on one side, thumb on the other side, and you can use it to drag across the top of your clay pulling until it fills in all those valleys. You can spin it around. You can see that I now have it on a piece of cardboard. You want that so that your base does not accidentally stick to the table. Um, coils won't stick because you're rolling them enough, but when it's a flat slab like this, it will frequently try to stick and live forever on my tables, which is not good. Um, so once you've got this all down, um, this is your lovely base. Kind of round it out the way you want it to. And now you're ready to start taking the rest of your coils and building upwards. Now there is the image on the side of the room. There's the stuff that I posted on Schoology. Um, so I'm not gonna go over the different types because you can pretty much figure out how to make them um, just by looking at what they are. So you know, if you want it like the wiggle back and forth one, you go like this. Again, whenever these touch or whenever these touch each other, you have to score all along the inside. Yes, I know it's annoying. However, if you want your cup to not break, that's what you have to do. Well, my neighbor's dog is barking like a lot. Hopefully you can't hear that. Slip, 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 fold. You also have to go on this side. Score, 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 score. Yes, this is the time consuming part of this. Score, score, score. Flip it this way. And you will keep doing that all the way across. And then this will get attached like before. All right, we're gonna do some movie magic to get a couple of these together. And then I will show you how to do the smoothing step. Okay, so I have my one ring all the way around. It's okay that the top is not entirely even as so you go around and see it goes up and down. Um, but I've added all of my pieces together. It's all nice and scored. Now we are not gonna smooth the outside, although I do suggest smoothing the base up into your first row. Again, I'm just doing this with my finger really quickly. We're not gonna do this for all of them, but the base tends to be an area that likes to leak. So we're gonna do it just for this first one. Everything after that, you don't have to do this for. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. I should have movie magic to this part, but I'm almost done. Okay. You then have to smooth the inside of this. Again, take one of these rib tools and you can blend. So you see just by scraping along the side there, I've started blending them together. If you find that the rib tool like won't get down into that bottom edge, there are also blending tools that can get in lower. Or again, 
can just use your finger. But it's really, really important that this whole inside bit gets very smoothed out. The base gets smoothed to the sides and each row after this gets smoothed up. The whole inside of this should be one soft, smooth sweep. That way when you glaze it, it'll fill in every last little thing, even if there's a tiny little crack, um, and you'll be able to drink out of this. If you don't, it's gonna leak and you're gonna be sad and then well, that's, that's kind of the end of that. All right, pausing for more mu movie magic. Okay, so I finished smoothing the inside of this first row. I also added a little bit of water to my finger to really smooth, I have a crack, because of how I was holding it. You don't want to pick it up and flex it too much. You want to really hold from underneath. Um, I went through and smoothed the whole inside bottom as well. When it's short like this, it's easy to get my hand in here. If I wait until it's really tall, I'm not going to be able to smooth the bottom out the way that I really need to. So remember, smooth as you go. Don't wait for the end. Again, pausing for movie magic. Okay, so I've added the next type of coil on here. You can see that some of them only have two, some of them have three. I'm trying to keep it about level as I go across. Um, it just makes my life a little bit easier later. I'm still going through and smoothing all the way around as I build. Uh, just wanted to give you the reminder of put your hand out here, cupping it to the outside as you work to smooth the inside. Because if you're pushing out, your cup's gonna start kind of stretching and going outwards if you don't have that pressure on the outside edge. All right, um, so this is, hmm, actually let me grab my ruler. All right, so now if I check my height on this one, it is exactly four inches tall. Check me out, I'm amazing. Um, I think because, especially because it's such a wide cup, I like that as a height. However, this rim right here, because I did the twirling, is maybe not the easiest to drink out of. So I'm gonna add one more coil to the top here that's just a single, normal, plain coil, um, just as a way to give it a lip a little easier to drink from. Uh, and then I will be ready to start making my handle and be done with this cup. Okay, so I have added the last coil. I even used the pointy edge of the um, shaping tool here in order to just kind of run through that last little uh, coil to really make sure it's stuck on there. You can even do that in between your other ones, but it's not as necessary. Now my thing, my cup, because I used really thick bulky coils and I made really big thick coils to begin with, is heavy. It's a, it's a hefty, it's a, it's a solid mug. If you want yours to be really drinkable, you might want to make yours a little thinner. Mine's probably going to be a pencil cup because this is this is a little heavy. This is a little bit thick. Um, however, it means I need to make a bigger handle because the heavier your cup is, you need to be able to lift from the handle. So I'm going to put this off to the side. We start making the handle the same way we did with the coil, only this coil is going to be a little bit thicker. Um, we don't want to make it quite as thin. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera again. Oop, random bits of dried clay. Um, this time, if you'll notice, I am actually rolling with the whole length of my hand because I actually want it to be a little bit and I can even pat it down to make it more of that oval. I can pull on it and actually stretch it to be the shape that I want. I can smush it into the shape that I want. And you basically want to be able to make a curve. Something like this. You can pull this end up. Let me cut that part off here. It looks a little bit like an ear, right? But if you think about it, like your hand fits right in here like this, lifts up. Now again, mine is a giant one because mine is a giant one. You can make smaller, daintier ones. You can make like little itty bitty ones where really you can only get like your finger in and that's your whole handle but you better have a lighter cup because otherwise you're not really picking your cup up like that. In order to attach it, what do we have to do? Score, slip, and smooth, just like always. So we go score, 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 score. Pick the side that you like the least. I'm gonna go with this one. You might wanna run a little bit of water around the outside of this first just to kind of smooth out any last bumps, lumps, that kind of stuff. You don't want to make this super wet though. Like mine, I really should give it a day to dry, but this is a video, so I'm not doing that. And then you're gonna go score, 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 score. Slip, slip. 
then press these together like so. You can then blend this into the side of your mug. You can use your blending tool again to help you kind of pull some of this from the handle into the cup itself. You're gonna to wanna to do that under here as well. Everyone always forgets that part. All the way around, run your finger over it so it's nice and smooth. And then you're gonna repeat the same steps for the top, pulling a little bit from the handle into the mug, handle into the mug. Probably blocking you completely when I do it that way. Pulling a little bit of the handle into the mug itself. And again, a little bit of water or slip to help smooth this out. Smooth away any of those bumps and lumps. You can even smooth a little bit of the cup into the handle to make a nice smooth transition. If you're finding that your cup handle, like mine, because it's so fresh, is sinking and you really want it to stick up more, you can just take a little extra piece of clay and help hold it in place down there until it's ready to dry. So if I tilt this a little, see it's holding it up like that. It'll help keep the rest of this in place. You also are gonna wanna take a little bit of water and just smooth out like your clay is gonna crack some when you, and this is where like one of those rubber or metal rib tools is really nice because it cracks as it's being bent into a new shape. So a little bit of water, very lightly, just kind of scrape over the surface. Just smooth out any of those cracks. Now, you don't want to add too much water because too much water will actually make it crack and break off more, but a little bit of water is your friend. And that is how you make a coil mug, or in my case, a giant coil mug. Like so.